The Echoes. Okay. We already started a few minutes, but a quick introduction. I am Dylan Jelly Cruz. I will be today's class auditor. I'll be in the back. Uh, just helping the presentation go through. If you take 10 minutes, five minutes, it's not for you, don't worry. Um, if you could vote your questions at the very end, the five minutes will be for you. If the presentation goes longer than five minutes, you will see this flag in the room just to go get your attention. Um, thank you all for coming. If this is your first B-side event, hope you like it. If you're a seasoned veteran, pretty much the same thing goes. We're going to do the presentation, we're going to do questionnaire. Uh, if you want to stay behind for a little bit, we do have another session at 10.30. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Arctic Book. If no one knows what Arctic Book is, it's a 24-7 service that helps companies with cyber threats. They offer expert responses and all the good things. Um, 58. Uh, our presenter, if you don't know, do you know who our presenter is? I don't know. Kate. Higgins? Perfect. I have five questions. Yeah. Not a lot of people know, but yes, it is Mr. Alex Higgins, correct? Yes. Perfect. Uh, he was an Empower graduate. Uh, here, where is that located? I'm so sorry. Uh, that's actually online, but online. it's here in San Antonio. In San Antonio. He is a penetration tester at Breakpoint Labs and was recently a agent for Hiring of Heroes program. Fun fact about him, he has over nine. Certifications and licenses. Uh, don't ask me how I know that, but his link to the page will be open on my desktop. <laughs> That's a good bit of OSEN. OSEN. <laughs> but we're going to start in a few minutes. Just enjoy it. 10 minutes. Please give us your attention. Is that good? Yeah, no worries. It's no worries. I like mine a little more casual anyway. I'd rather have like a little back and forth. It's okay. Nothing wrong with that. And then I will definitely tell you on the 10 minute mark, 5 minute mark. All right. Well, good morning, guys. How's it going? All right. I recognize a few faces in here. I think I've met some of you guys at some of these conferences. All right. We'll do a bit of a, a lessons learned kind of thing with some, some different things I learned since I got in the industry. Uh, about a year ago, I was a mechanical and engineering student who was working on motorcycles and things like that, designing clutch systems, and went into cyber. Let's see here. I hope it's the right way, so we start going. PCS, now what? This was me about a year ago, dumped in the middle of San Antonio forever, stayed away, trying to figure out where do I go, what do I do now? My lovely wife joined the Air Force. She is uh, sitting up here in the front. You guys, she's a, a badass medical nurse out here trying to help save lives. So, why to consider cyber? Well, first off, there's such a massive, massive demand. And I will walk around a lot. I, I like to pace, that's just how I am. I don't do the whole sit down, but um, there's a huge demand for cyber. So, so many people need cyber careers right now, and there's a skill gap that's existing right now in our environment of so many people that just have demand for it. Um, average cybersecurity expert, <coughs> most of us make around six figures. That's the average in our career cycle, whether it be red team, blue, yellow. We'll get into what the colors mean later. Um, remote work, everyone likes the idea of what happened from COVID. The only positive that came out of COVID was being able to work on Slack and Zoom and things like that from home. Awfully nice. Laterally moving to other spaces. This happens to be my favorite, is that no matter what, if you're working in a specific position in cyber, it's very easy to pivot somewhere else. I'm a penetration tester. I do offensive security, poking holes in people's networks and things to see what I can find. If I get bored of that, I can pivot into defensive, or I can help create tools, or develop malware. There's, the possibilities are limitless, and it's also, a constantly evolving industry. We stay learning all the time because there's always new things happening. There's always new developments in our field. So if you're wanting to go into this, the best thing to do is to figure out what you want to do. Because the biggest problem that exists in this is there is a giant sea of certificates that navigate. There is everything. Everyone offers a certificate, and there's a new one that drops almost every week. And knowing what to get what to do so that you can pursue your career 
You know, you can take CAS or something like that, but if you want to be a penetration tester, that may not help you that much. Whereas something like the OSCP or something may be in your space. Find your plan of attack. The best thing that helped me was plan out what I wanted to get and pursue so that I could get the career that I wanted to be. And then this is extremely important. No one told me how much this would be necessary in our field. Learning the difference between a technical resume and a regular job resume. All right. Let's talk education. Since we're in a university, I won't knock the university. It is a thing that is very powerful and very useful. It does help you scale some of the more entry-level roles or IT or things like that. But the biggest thing with education is you get what you get out of it by what you do while you're in it. The most important thing you can do is have that hands-on keys experience while you're in here. If it's not being offered in your course, do it yourself. Pursue it. Find it. Whenever I was going through Empower, I was building honeypots on the side. I was putting up projects on GitHub, on Vault, or on uh, SourceForge, and other places like that, so that I had something to pad my resume. It can be kind of expensive if you're not, of course, writing on a scholarship. Um, that is kind of more so leading towards the downside, but it does help some employers hire you just on your commitment to the field for this. Like I mentioned, though, you definitely are going to have to have that hands on keys that having all these degrees or certs or things that tell me that you've looked at this information is great, but if you can't tell me what you did, that doesn't help you that much. We'll talk certifications a little bit here. CompTIA, a few of these are kind of necessary to work in the field. It's just kind of the, the evil of it. Um, they're very multiple choice based though. Um, SEC plus, of course, you have almost half to half in this industry. Network Plus is another one that I pretty much recommend almost across the board. Um, but since they're multiple choice exams for the most part, it doesn't weigh quite as heavy as some of these next ones, like for, in, for instance, my field, the OSCP, OSWP, things like that, where it's more of a technical exam where your skills are put on display. You know, hack these different networks and then 24 hours, and now it'll give me a detailed report right up about what you did and how you did it because that shows real hands-on keys, and as I like to call it, uh, for the military term, for living on base for so long, my dad would call it embracing the suck, because you're supposed to struggle through it. That means the world to it. Um, of course, there's SANS courses as well, and there's a lot more than what's just on this list. SANS courses have a lot of really great information, as well as a good bit of difficulty. They are multiple choice based, but that's not really their downside. They're expensive if you don't have someone put the bill for you. Uh, the average SANS course runs around 10,000. Sometimes more than that, depending on what level you're taking. And then, of course, since we're ISC2 has an Alamo chapter here, I would be remiss if I don't mention them. They have a lot of good, especially blue team oriented certificates like the CISSP. All right. So, this is a nice little thing I like to throw in there being a military spouse myself. These are some different organizations and things that offer stuff for those of us that are military veteran or military spouses. Syracuse University has the Veterans Career Transfer Program where they'll help pay for a couple of your certificates. If you're a military spouse, it's one. If you're military, I believe it's either two or three. Sigma Forces offers free training, um, as well as USO Pathfinder. They actually have a lot of good courses on their page for military veterans and military spouses. Um, Coursera and Udemy. Those are free for military members. You just have to sign up for it. There's a military sign-up page, and you can take everything across the site for free. Yes, sir. I thought you mentioned this. If you were going to be in any UT campuses, uh -huh. you can also get a course of free. Yes, I am getting into that too. Um, as well as Coursera, like you mentioned, for UT campuses, you can get it for free through them. And Udemy, if you have a library card here in the state of Texas, you can sign up with that library card number or free and take anything on the site. Skillstorm and Empower. Skillstorm is a little bit more military oriented. Um, it is a paid training program. Uh, they pay you the rank of E5. Don't ask me what that figure is on the top of my head. I actually don't remember. Um, but it is a hands-on. They do labs and things with you. It's a great program. Uh, one of the recruiters who works here in town, McKenzie, he's awesome. Um, Empower, this is the one that I did. This is not just for military and it is free. Um, we have a slide that goes into them here in a second, too, as well. 
My CAA, this is specific for military spouses. This is a scholarship that they give you for being a military spouse. It's about four grand. Uh, it'll get you about three certificates out of it for free at no cost to you. And then of course, Fed TV, or Fed VTV, they uh, offer a lot of training and things like that. It's free for all of our military and veteran. Professional networking. Oh, it looks like it ate my little Reddit symbol. Oh well. Um, LinkedIn, this is becoming our new resume. Everyone likes the easy LinkedIn and the quick apply, as well as anyone can reference you like that. It's wonderful. Twitter, uh, or X now, still don't like that. Um, it's a good place to follow people in the community. Um, and of course, some forums, blogs, and some companies too that make posts about things that are going on. Keeping in the know and being able to talk about what's going on in our industry means a world of difference. And whenever you go to interviews or things like that, it helps you stand out from the other people because it shows you have a passion in this field. Blogs, of course, the same kind of idea, but just on different pages. Staying up to date with new developments or what's going on and existing in our industry, some new attacks or developments in software or new defensive tools. Great old YouTube University. You can learn so many things on here. And it's free, of course, with ads. But, there's so many things you can learn from this that cost you nothing. This is a great tool you should use. And I know a lot of people like to scoff at Reddit, but there's r slash pages for all of our careers and all the things that we do, whether it be NetSack or you know, building an industry or pen testing advice. There's a lot of big leaders in the industry who post on there regularly about things and advice to help us. We'll point out some, some different groups Professional networking in person. Yes, because you are in cyber, you still have to talk to people. It makes a big difference. I got in because I sold myself and networked myself. That's what got me there. AFSIA. AFSIA does events like twice a month. Uh, it's like 20 bucks for a membership, and they almost always have free food and free drinks. If that's not inspiration to go, I don't know what is. And they're wonderful, wonderful people. CyberOps. CyberOps does some meetings every now and then. They usually have cool tech and they bring in some industry leaders every now and then. They're awesome too. Mill City Meetup. I do mention this one, of course, being a military spouse. Um, they're a big proprietary component and they have partnerships with people who specifically hire military veterans and military spouses who give us preference. Um, and then cybersecurity conferences. Kind of like this one. Talking about home skills. Build a lab. Cali Linux is free. You just gotta have space on the laptop or a computer. Build a lab, learn how to navigate in Linux. It doesn't matter what team that you're on, red, blue, yellow, green, more than likely you're gonna have some form of interaction with Linux, so it's good to know. Hack the box, if you're going in my space, where you're penetration testing or red teaming or things like that, hack the box is, I think, 20 bucks a month for the premium membership and you get walkthroughs for every box that's a legacy box. It is a great way to get hands on keys without having to work in the environment. Of course, try hack me. Try hack me is actually kind of evolved from being just a red team oriented kind of thing, and they have boxes for people who want to work in a SOC or in any blue team environment or development environments. They're more diversifying their kind of online presence. Splunk, Fortinet, Elastic, all of these big vendors, if you want to work in a blue team, these are some good things that you can take too because they have all their training online for free. You have a company that you're interested in and their SOC uses Splunk, take the courses on Splunk before you apply. And you go like, I already know how to do all this and I know how to work the tool. CyberOps, there's quite a few companies that actually offer some free levels of training, some of pay of course, but there are some, quite a few vendors like CyberOps who offer free trainings that you can take. And then of course, like I mentioned earlier, Coursera and Udemy, they have a monthly subscription, but there's a lot of ways to either get discount codes or get it for free. Building soft skills. This is the part no one likes to talk about that much. <laughs> Communication, teamwork, and problem solving. You're gonna have to talk to people. Like I said, just because we get to work from home doesn't mean you get to have, you don't have that back and forth anymore. Critical thinking, adaptability, and attention to detail. If you're not noticing things that are going on, how can you do your job? Part of what you do when you're in the blue team space, you stare at logs and analyze scenes and source. 
That little, I notice one IP that's off, or this PCAP data doesn't look right. That's where that little attention to detail. Adaptability is a big one too. Like I said, we're ever evolving in our industry. There's always something new that's happening. Whether you're an attacker, there's a new method that's taken the forefront. Or a defender, there's a new method that's taken the forefront. Time management and ethical integrity. No one likes to talk about ethics, but it is what it is. We have to discuss this. You gain access to a lot of things that can be really bad if you misuse your power. We'll get into the ethics here in a little bit. Um, that customer service orientation, because at some point, again, you're going to have to talk to people who don't just work for your company. And resilience, especially if you do red teaming, because half of what we do is fail all the time. I cannot speak highly enough about this. Find a mentor or be a mentor. You'll be shocked at the little bit of what you do. My favorite way to teach people what I do is I teach them and then try to have them teach someone else. You'll be shocked what you can learn by having them try to teach just 30 minutes after what you engage with them. This will take you so far. A little shout out to Empower here. You do earn real certificates, ones that are used in the industry. This is worth mentioning. They also do social support and career development. They're one of the few programs who will go and cover every single base that they can to support you. They have a careers manager, they have a social support manager. If you need clothes to interview with, they will help provide you clothes to interview with. You need a laptop to do your coursework on, they'll help provide that too. And not to mention that man there, Dan, and then I can't see Jose in this picture. I'm way, way, way back there. But uh, they go out and talk to companies every day and try to partner with all of these different companies to find connections for any of you trying to get into the industry. And they work super hard for you. And it's very, very personal hands-on instructors who care. There's a lot of times they're working, burning every second that they can to try to help you. Hiring our heroes, of course, they have internships to companies at no cost. They're a wonderful program, and of course, they have a lot of connections to companies who hire military veterans and military spouses. Um, it, like I said, it doesn't cost the company anything and give you preference in hiring. And a huge support system across pretty much all 50 states at this point. Networking. Again, you're going to have to know how a network operates to be able to do anything. How are you going to be able to attack or defend a port if you can't tell me what a port is? I also put some things off to the side here for some of these, for things that, how I look at things on this. So like IP addressing and DNS config, I look at poisoning or spoofing or other fun things like that. Or even the network segmentation and access controls, I look at an opportunity to engage in some form of lateral movement or bypass. Linux, like I said, you have to have to know Linux. This is the one hill I'll die on because it will make your life so much easier. You pull an entire, yeah, I do, I do put a lot of pictures of these, sorry. Um, if you pull a network data from NMAP, for instance, across a huge set of slash 16s or 24s, and it's like, all right, I want you to find everything on Telnet now. Uh, you can't grep or awk or cut or do something to parse some of that data. It's going to make your life a lot harder. A job that takes 10 minutes now takes you six hours. Python. You don't have to know this one initially, but I wish I did. Because this makes life so much easier now because repetitive tasks are now automated with Python. You can write scripts that will make your life a lot easier and shorten what it takes to do some of this. Where are our sponsor? Oh, no. I'm, I'm just kidding. Of course, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ethics and legality. Okay, we do a lot of things and operate spaces where there's quite a few restrictions against what we do. Without express permission, there's a lot of nasty trouble you can get in. Like all Equifax here and Facebook getting some nasty fines for not doing their due diligence and then lying about it afterwards. Like. Should you, if you find someone's World of Warcraft, should you delete their account just because you can? Yes. Maybe <laughs> you might be saving them. Becoming a penetration tester. I'm going to dive into a little bit like what I do. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. 
Because the world needs bad men because we keep other bad men from the door. Uh, my boss puts this every time he does this talk too, just because it's just so good. Um, some common cyber attacks in the workspace. These are things I'm sure you've heard. Um, zero day over here, of course, is the new boogeyman. Ooh. Phishing attacks, phishing attacks will always be high and they're evolving and they're getting better. It's not just some Nigerian prince anymore. Ransomware, um, a lot of them don't really use the flash drive anymore. It's usually some form of infected file or thing like that. Um, of course, DOS and DDoS, everyone probably has heard of that by now. Man in the middle, SQL, inje SQL injection is more so the one that everyone's in a lot of these certs that I took are like, ah, no one really does that anymore. It doesn't exist or it doesn't happen. I did SQL injection yesterday. <laughs> yeah. This is still a problem. And there's a reason it's on the OWASP top 10. It's number three still. Cross-site scripting, and of course DNS spoofing. Oh, you can do a lot of cool stuff with DNS now. The impersonating DHCP has been one of my new favorite things. All right, let's talk about a day in the life of a penetration tester. Like I said, you're gonna fail a lot. It's what we do. You'll be studying all the time, researching, sandboxing, because there's always something new. How, and my favorite part is I get the mindset of how can I abuse the system? How can I be the bad guy? And of course, the little caveat, you get to lot, write lots of reports. Some offensive security tools, uh, this is of course not all of them. There's a lot in here. We'll go ahead and thumb pass just a little bit. This is a bit of the pen tester methodology, kind of like what we think, reconnaissance, assessment, reporting, remediation, tracking, and then retesting. Um, everyone kind of has their own deviation on these standards, depending on whether it's NIST or OWASP or things like that, as well as kind of some breakdowns of how the assessment part works. Get out of jail free card. I, I like to add this in here because this is great to talk about. You have to get express permission to do what we do in the environment and make sure that the people you're talking to can give you that permission. If you're breaking into a building and they don't own the building and another person gave you permission, guess what? You're going to jail. You didn't do your due diligence. It's still breaking and entering. Um, this is if you start getting into the federal space. This is just kind of like a side note caveat. These are some certificates and how the DOD evaluates. Um, and then a few links here, some places that I like to mention. Cybrary has a lot of free stuff. Of course, OWASP, that post publications, um, the pen testing standard. A few people on YouTube that I do like. Hackbox, TriHackMe, Phone Hub, and of course, PortSwigger. You can actually learn a lot from some of their courses. They have really, really good interactive videos, too. All right, questions? Yes, sir. I got two questions. OK. Uh, can I get this for one of my coworkers, be through someone else through SkillBridge, and he's trying to go into cyber? Yes. And he's super fresh to IT? Yes, I can email this to you, or we can come up with something. I'll give you the slide okay. after you want. And try hacking? Yes. Is super good because it has like basic Linux. Yes, of course it does. Well, to help you get to the point. Yes, where Hack the Box is primarily just red team and penetration testing focus. Um, Try Hack Me is kind of spread out and is in a few different areas. They're about the same price. I believe it's about twenty or twenty five bucks a month for the premium. Go with the premium; it's a lot easier. I really do mean that. They have their own stand up box that's internet based. It's, it's really nice instead of having a proxy in. Anyone else? We're all good? Awesome. Well, thank you guys. If anyone please have any questions, I'll hang out for a little bit.